Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to look at creating prediction intervals from a regression model. Um, and I'm going to make a brief stop at confidence intervals, but our goal is prediction intervals. So I have a set of data here that has 36 observations um, about, uh, about housing. So we have price, which is our predictor variable. So that's what we're trying to predict. And the variables that we're going to use, our X values, are going to be square footage, the number of beds, the number of baths. And then for colonial style, I've used a dummy indicator variable where zero is not colonial and one means it is a colonial. So I'm going to come up to data. And I'm going to select data analysis. Remember that you need to have the data analysis tool pack enabled on your in your Excel in order to get this function. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select regression and I get my dialog box. So for my input, my Y variable, remember we're trying to predict um, price. So I'm going to click in the label and then I'm going to hit control shift and my down arrow and that'll select all of the the data if you select the whole column sometimes it gets weird because it reads all the empty cells and wants to know the input for my predictor variables and that's going to be square footage bed bath colonial so I've just highlighted those headers. I'm going to go back to control shift down. Now I have all of my predictor selected. Want to make sure to click labels because I included those labels. And for output range, I'm just going to have it put it right here so that we can see it all at once. Everything's good. I hit OK. And it runs the regression for me. What we're going to do is we're going to use this. A confidence interval is for the mean value of y. And we use y hat as the point estimate. The prediction interval gives us the range that contains the individual value of y given fixed values of our X's. So in other words, it's going to predict a price, but that price is going to be based on a fixed given value for square foot, bed, bath, and whether or not it's colonial. In order to create this, the confidence interval and our prediction interval, I'm going to have to modify my regression. So theoretically, I didn't have to run this one, but I always do. Um, and so now I'm going to go over, and I've already done some of the work for us. So I'm going to come over to what I call my modified regression. So what I'm interested in is I'm interested in a prediction interval for a house that is a 2500 square foot home with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it is a colonial. So what I've done is my original data um, and my original variables are still here, but what I've done is I have created three new variables. And you'll see I just did it by saying square foot asterisk beds asterisk colonial asterisk. It does not matter how many predictor variables you have. If all you had was square feet, then that would be all you would quote unquote transform. So in order to be able to run this quote unquote modified regression, what I did was I adjusted my original data by what I want to use or what I need to create my prediction interval for. So I took square footage minus the 2500 gives me 509. Two bedrooms minus three bedrooms gives me a negative one bedroom. 
two and a half bass minus two bass gives me 0.5 bass. Colonial zero minus colonial one gives me a negative one. So we always want to take the x here minus whatever we are here, and I tend to call that x1. And so I did that all the way down. And I did that just with formulas. So I said b2 minus m, hard cell reference 1, and then I simply dragged that formula all the way down, and it copied it down and did my math for me. Same thing with my bedrooms. I took beds in C2 minus my beds over here in M2, copied it all the way down. You all get the, get the idea, right? All right, so now I'm going to run the regression using these variables because they're actually based on what I'm looking to predict. So I come back to data, go to data analysis. I come up here to my regression. I say, okay, I got to get rid of everything I used to have. Um, although my price is still in the same column, so I don't need to mess with that. But what I do need to change is I need to change my values of X. So highlight the header rows, hit control, um, control shift, can't find my key, down, it selected all of it, I still have labels, and I'm going to put this um, for an output range, I'm going to put it here, let's say, okay, so now it's run my regression for me. So if I want just the confidence interval, and I simply want the confidence interval, which is a prediction for the mean value of y using y hat as an estimate, then Excel has already done that for me, and that's going to be these two values. So we know that the 95% um, confidence interval for the average price, a 2,500 square foot, three bed, two bath colonial, is going to be between 529,000 and 641,000 with some change. So your regression output in Excel will give you the confidence interval. However, for the prediction interval, we've got to do a little bit more work. Okay, so all I've done is just copied the part of the regression that I needed onto my new um, onto my new uh, worksheet. So in order to in order to create this prediction interval, I'm going to get, begin with my point estimate of y hat, which is going to be this intercept here. I'm going to have to find my t value at our um, n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Here, I'm going to use, this is my standard error of the intercept, which is right here. And then this s squared is the standard error of the regression. So you can calculate all of this by hand, but if you use your regression output, then it's just a matter of dropping things in where they need to be for this prediction interval. All right, so I'm simply going to grab what I need. And so I need my intercept, which is here. I need the standard error of the intercept, which is here. I need the standard error of the regression, which is here. And now I need my t alpha divided by 2. So remember, the t distribution is based on degrees of freedom. And in this case, it will be n, our number of observations, which was 36. k is the number of our predictor variables. In this case, we had 4 and then minus 1. So if you only had one predictor variable, it would be n minus 1 minus 1. So 36 minus 4 minus 1 gives me 31. And so I'm going to put this here 
just so that I've got it with me. And I'm going to e say equals E I N V, and I want the T inverse two tail because remember I'm doing an interval. So 95% um, interval gives me an alpha of 0.05. Do not split it in half. Excel will do that for you. And then I say comma, and we calculated that I had 31 degrees of freedom. And I say enter. My critical T is 2.040. So now I'm going to go ahead and work the formula. So we said we needed the, um, if we look at our formula, I have um, my intercept up here, so I'm good. I have my T value, so I'm good. Now it wants the standard error of um, y hat squared. And so I'm going to say equals, and I'm just going to take that standard error, the intercept, and square it. Now I have to square the standard error of the regression. I'm going to say square that. Hit enter. Now the formula tells me now I've done this part of the formula here. I did this. Now I have to add them together. And right, so I'm just going to say equal sum. I'm going to add those together. So now I'm done with that. Now I have to take the square root. So I'm going to say equals, what I like to say is squirt. S-Q-R-T, the square root of this, and I'm going to hit enter. So here's my square root. So my margin of error right, is my T value times the result of this formula. And my intercept, we said, was this 585. And now for the prediction interval, I've simply taken and said my estimate minus my margin of error to get my lower level, lower side of the interval. And now here I've said take my intercept, add that margin of error, and it comes up with my upper limit. So before in the confidence interval, we had an interval that we estimated with 95% certainty contained the average price of a 2,500 square foot, three bed, two bath colonial. Here, we have the 95% prediction interval that predicts that an individual or a specific 2,500 square foot, three bed, two bath, colonial home would be at a price of 407, 139, and 763.031. What you have to remember is your prediction interval will always be wider than any corresponding confidence interval. So I hope this helped. Let Excel do the work for you. And I thank you for watching.